Here we have our friend Eugene. He's hanging out at this orange backdrop in the nice sunny July weather. And uh, what we want to do to start things off is use a Voronoi fracture to send him up in the air and have him explode on the ground. Okay? So, let's start with a Voronoi fracture node. We need two things, the geometry, that's Eugene, and we need some points to determine where those Voronoi cells will be. So let's create a scatter, get some points like that, set this to something low for the time being, maybe like 80 points, and then set that up right there. Okay, so it didn't take very long at all. We have this, and it looks like nothing happened, but something did. If we go to our exploded view, and we use this node, look at that. There is all those pieces. And so this is what I was talking about in the last video. The idea is that we have this normal looking object, but once something hits this object, we have all these pieces and that's how they show up. Okay, so we have that going on. Now, before we get to constraints, let's just try to bring this into adopt simulation and get something going, okay? Let's use a transform. I'll bring him up, maybe rotate him a little bit like that. And we're just gonna have gravity affect Eugene, have him fall and shatter down. Let's create a DOP network and use a rigid body solver. Again, this is the solver that you want to use. So we do that, we're set to bullet by default, so that's good. And as I mentioned before, you might think, okay, well, I mentioned that we want to use a packed, or, or, and as I mentioned before, you'll mainly want to use a packed RBD object, or an RBD packed object, same thing. Let's plug that into the object and say that the geometry source is first context geometry like that. Once we do that, we need to add some gravity. So say gravity force, that goes after the rigid body solver. And then we want to collide with the ground, so we'll need a ground plane right there. And we merge that up here with this RBD packed object. So right there. And let's set our relationship to collide. That's good. And then the effector, let's say mutual. So that the ground plane affects Eugene and vice versa. Okay, so if I try to play this, nothing's going to happen. And we have this little error message on the rigid body solver. So, what's this say? It says, geometry does not contain any primitive types supported by the solver. So, you know, uh-oh, that's not good. We want packed geometry, right, to go in there. And the reason why it's yelling at us is because our geometry is not packed right now. So, at some point or another, we need to figure out what this packed geometry business is all about. In the meantime, though, let's see if we can get this working by trying out some of the other objects. And let's see what happens. So if we use instead just a regular RBD object, so this rubber ducky looking thing, let's go to our SOP path. And actually, before we browse for that, let's create a null out here. And then let's just say that this is going to be in all caps, Eugene out, like that. So that now we go to our little rubber ducky and we say SOP path and we go to Eugene out right there. Okay, bring that in and there we go. We have Eugene. However, the issue here is that if we go forward, we have something going on, but we don't have all those pieces breaking apart. So let me show you how to analyze what's happening with any of these objects. What the solver sees is not what you see here in the viewports. We see the geometry as it was brought in from SOPS, but the solver is seeing something different. So let's turn off this display geometry and under the collisions tab, this is where we'll find our preview meshes that the rigid body solver is looking at. So you might think, okay, Collisions, RBD solver, volume, we check the collision guide. Oh, this must be what we're looking at. But that's not true. And that's because if we go here to the rigid body solver, remember we said that we're using bullets. We're using this solver, not the RBD. 
So if we go to this object, we have RBD solver right there, and that does not correlate with what bullet wants to use. Instead, we have this bullet data tab right here. So let's turn off collision guide, go to bullet data, and say show guide geometry. This is the geometry that bullet is looking at when it goes to solve the simulation. Whenever the object is active, that means it's moving and doing stuff, the object will be blue. And if it's ever deactivated, it will turn red like that. And red basically means that the solver is no longer thinking about this object, it's no longer trying to move it, and it's now asleep. It's now not active. So, okay, we have this going on, but what's the deal with this shape? It's kind of weird, isn't it? Well, the shape here is what's called a convex hole. And think of it like this. It's kind of like taking Eugene and putting a bunch of wrapping paper around him to simplify the geometry. Let's actually try to see if we can zoom in here a bit better. Oh, okay, maybe like that. There we go. And yeah, so the idea here is that we have this geometry. It's wrapped around Eugene. The reason why we're trying to use a different piece of geometry than what the actual mesh is is to speed up the simulation. Because the thing is, is that if we used each one of these points to represent how this simulates, it's going to take a really long time. And so instead, what the solver will try to do is it'll try to simplify everything by creating this guide geometry. So that's what's happening right there. Watch what happens when I press this create convex hole per set of connected primitives. We end up with something like that, which is kind of close to what we had. Now let's turn off the display geometry. It's not actually lining up very well with the pieces, but it's really trying though. It's really close to what we have. Well, as you can see, we have a bunch of these different things now. That's really good, but we need to go down here to this collision padding and turn this to a lower value. This collision padding will basically push everything outwards. And because Eugene's very small, it's doing too much of that. So there we go. Now we have each piece of our Voronoi fracture being wrapped up in a convex hole. Let's maybe take our collision padding up a little bit, see if we can find a good number for this. Maybe 0 0.003. There we go. The reason why we have this collision padding, by the way, is so that it cleans up some of the uh, intersections that might exist in between each piece. So that's why that's there. And also, like, if you had a character or something like that, and you don't want cloth going through the geometry, you can give yourself a bit of extra padding to prevent those things from happening. So that's why we have the collision padding right there like that. But anyway, this is what Bullet will now see. And even though we have a bunch of these pieces, they all stay together. And that's because we decided to use an RBD object. This RBD object, no matter what you set the geometry representation to be, it'll always think of it as one unit. Eugene is one unit, and everything that's colliding against it will collide based on these guides. However, let's say that we don't want that. We want Eugene to, you know, have these pieces and we want the pieces to shatter everywhere. Well, we shouldn't use this RBD object. Instead, what you ought to use is a RBD fractured object. If we plug this in, let's go like that, go back to the beginning, and let's see, where are we at here? Oh, we need to browse for the SOT path, so we'll go right, right there, Eugene out. There he is, and we now go to turn off display, collisions, bullet data, show guide ge geometry. We have the same kind of thing going on, but we go down here, and we take our collision padding down to something like that. Now as we go forward, it's going to take a little bit longer, but we actually have these pieces falling down. And if we want to turn off the guide geometry, turn back on the display geometry, we end up with something like this. Okay, so that's not too bad. 
I mean, this actually works, right? This does the trick. However, there is a better way of doing this. And the reason why there's a better way of doing this is because if we use the RBD packed object, this will give us some superpowers that we don't have with this RBD fractured object. Uh, what I mean by that is the RBD packed object uses points to control these different pieces. And so because we can think of a piece as a particle or a point, that means we can use all of the particle nodes to control our simulation. That's the main reason why we use the RBD packed object. Plus, it's also faster. So there's the benefit of that as well. But just to show you the difference between an RBD object, an RBD fractured object, and very soon an RBD packed object, that's kind of what you're looking at. Also, on the RBD fractured object, the reason why this behaves differently than the RBD object is because it looks at each individual piece and it kind of does this. It just copies a bunch of objects for each piece like this. So this one node is responsible for going through every single piece and doing essentially this sort of thing. Also, just for your own knowledge, we do have a static object, and that is different because a static object is not meant to move or be affected by any of the forces in the scene. So if we go browse for Eugene again, and we go ahead and press play, nothing happens. Again, it's static. Static is not affected by gravity. We could try to make it active, but that's not going to do what you think it might. And we could try saying use deforming geometry, and that's not going to happen either. So that just leaves us with him suspended in the air. Nothing's really happening. And uh, I'll get to what the use deforming geometry and create active object is about in the future. And the reason why you would use a static object is because, one, it's very quick to calculate. If the solver knows that it doesn't need to think about gravity, or any of the other forces when thinking about this object, it speeds things up. So if you had, let's say, a brick wall, I mean, I mean, look at this icon right here, it's like a brick wall and a sphere heading towards it, and you don't want that brick wall to break or be affected at all by the sphere, that is a situation where you would make a static object. In other words, the wall would not be affected by anything else, but other things can collide with it. So again, I'll talk more about active versus static in the future. That's an important thing to understand. But for now, just know that with Eugene, we don't want to use a static object. We want Eugene to be affected by the surrounding forces. In the next video, let's talk about pack geometry. We'll get a good definition of what that means. And then I'll show you the benefits of this RBD packed object versus the RBD fractured object.